The London Hammer is claimed to be one of many out-of-place artifacts found throughout the world. This hammer is claimed to be hundreds of millions of years old. In this video, I will cover the discovery of the out-of-place object and see if there is any evidence that can support it. To start things off, let's talk about the discovery of the London Hammer. It is important to note that the discovery of the artifact is told in different ways. So take the story of a grain of salt. It allegedly took place in June of 1936, but some versions of the story claim it happened in 1934. Max Edmund Han, sometimes called Frank for some reason, and his wife Emma Zadie Han were hiking along Red Creek, close to their home in London, Texas. Eventually, the two spotted a rock lump of a piece of wood protruding out of the rock. The rock node was supposedly found by a waterfall on the river. This can be backed up as there were several locations of small waterfalls on Red Creek. The closest being 10 kilometers or 6.2 miles southwest of London. It is important for later to know that the rock node was supposedly found not attached to any other rock surrounding it. The lack of sharp marks on the lump seemed to align with reports that the node was found loose and not chiseled out. Some time passed, and possibly in 1946 or 1947, their son George broke the rock open to expose a metal hammerhead with the wood handle still being attached. Here's a little description of the artifact. A part of the broken nodule is still attached to the hammer, with unfossilized mollusk shell found partly embedded into it. The hammerhead was reported to show very little oxidation when it was first exposed to the open air. The hammer was also said to be smooth with a brownish fossil-like coating, but for some reason it has become rusted and jagged. The handle looks to be mostly unmineralized wood, but does show some signs of black carbonization at the ends. It is around 1983 when we come to our next major event involving the hammer. Carl E. Bow a creationist and a follower of the Paluxy River man tracks and other geological oddities added the hammer to his collection of objects that he and others believe showed evidence of a young earth and that humans once lived with dinosaurs. Bo called the hammer the London artifact and displayed it at the 1986 creation conference in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The London hammer was shown again in 2006 at a talk by Bo at his Creation Evidence Museum in Texas. It seems that Bo and other creationists from the very beginning settled with assumptions without any solid evidence. They assumed that the nodule the rock was found in was once a part of the nearby rocks. But funny enough, they all had difficulty finding the geologic period of the nearby rocks. Bo claimed it was an Ordovician formation, while others like Walter Lang and Bartz claimed it was in Silurian rock. A report in Creation Ex Nihilo made an article in 1983 that claimed that the hammer was in limestone and dated it at 300 million years old. In a CEN article, it claimed that the rocks were around 400 to 500 million years old. According to Helfstein and Roth, in 1984, a researcher named John Watson explained the ridges at Red Creek were lower Cretaceous, which turned out to be true. Even after Watson pointed this out, Bo and others still claimed the rock was Ordovician. The inconsistency in the creationist reports really makes you question their credibility. The rock formation was eventually dated by conventional geologists to be around 110 to 115 million years old. The London artifact has been heavily protected by Bo and not available for study by a conventional scientist. In 1985, John Cole, a researcher from the National Center for Science Education, had a short time to review Bo's claims about the hammer. Cole said that the rock mass that formed around the hammer was real, but was not Ordovician, like it was claimed by Bo. He said that minerals in solution can harden around an interfering object that could have been dropped on the ground or in a crack if the source rock is chemically possible. Basically that means that dissolved minerals could hard around a recently made object in a relatively short time span. Cole continued on by claiming that the hammer was of recent American historical style and thought the hammer was a mining hammer from the 1800s. While others think it could be a metalworking hammer as the bulge on top of the hammer could have held a leather or wood cap that has worn away over time. If scientists were able to study the hammer, we could have already solved this interesting artifact. In order to have a strong case that proves the London hammer is an out-of-place object, 
one would need to do one of two things, have substantial evidence that proves the hammer was once a part of the ancient rock formation. This is very hard to prove, as the story of how it was found is just that, a story which was even claimed to not be attached to the rock formation. This lack of proof is already acknowledged by some creationists. The second way to prove the London artifact is an out-of-place object is to provide credible scientific evidence that can put an estimate on the age of the hammer. At this point, both of these conditions have not been met, but if they were to do it, the age of the hammer could be pinpointed from a couple of ways. The first would be to carbon-14 date the hammer's wooden handle. If there is no noticeable amount of carbon-14 in the handle, this would mean the hammer is more than 50,000 years old. And if the hammer was made earlier, carbon-14 dating would be able to come closer to the actual age of the hammer. But here lies the problem. Bo refused to allow the hammer to be carbon-14 dated. Bo had three important conditions in order to date the object. The first was to use mass spectrometry. The second was Bo had to be present, and the third was someone else had to pay for the dating. One creationist, Jim Lippard, argues against Bo, saying the first and second term was agreed upon, but the third term was just ridiculous, as Bo is the one making the claims. What makes this even funnier is that other people offered to pay for the dating, and Bo still refused to have it dated. Now that sounds like a man that had no clear intentions of finding the truth about the origins of the London Hammer. But that didn't stop David Lines, one of Bo's supporters in the 1990s, from claiming on a website that carbon-14 dating had been done from a sample inside the handle, and the results showed questionable dates from as far as 700 years old to the present time. Lines did not provide any information that showed where the tests were done and an official report of the findings. Most carbon-14 labs report a date with a plus or minus margin of error instead of a wide variety of dates. It is possible that there were multiple tests done that resulted in a number of dates, but there was still no proof it was even tested in the first place. Lines used the inconsistent dating as a way of claiming that this is proof that the artifact has been contaminated by foreign substances, even though carbon-14 dating labs have ways of greatly reducing contamination. If we are to believe what they are claiming were true, that would still leave the hammer dating between 700 years to the 1990s. That would go alongside what skeptics have already been claiming, that the hammer is fairly recent. That is far from 400 to 500 million years old, as some creationists have claimed. Bo, on the other hand, used the inconsistent data as a means of claiming carbon-14 dating is unreliable. But many creationists consider carbon-14 dating to be reasonably accurate. It just seems like Bo is making excuses to avoid the reality of the artifact. Another great way of proving or debunking the artifact as ancient is by studying the composition of the concretion. By studying the rock and the clamshell supposedly found within, we could find out if the clam is a recent species and if the concretion is similar to the surrounding rocks where it was found. So far to my knowledge, the clam has not been extensively studied, nor has a strong case been found linking the nearby rocks with the concretion. If we look at the contents of the concretion, we might find recent sediment that can debunk the hammer outright which makes sense why some creationists like Bo don't want the artifact to be studied. But even if the ancient sediment has been found in the concretion, it doesn't mean the hammer is millions of years old, as pointed out by John Cole. Ancient sediment in solution can harden around a recent object, sometimes as fast as 20 years or so. We can see great examples of this within World War II artifacts found in the Pacific. Moving on to the wood handle, David Lyons claims on Bo's website that the hammer's handle is fossilized. Again, this claim is lacking as it looks to be relatively fresh wood. Even some creationists don't believe the wood is fossilized. It also doesn't help hammer advocates that the hammer looks to be early American in style. The composition of the hammerhead is another interesting claim that lacks any evidence. It was reported by some creationists to have been studied at the credible Baytel labs in Columbus, Ohio and was found to consist of 96.6% iron, 2.6% chlorine, and 0.74% sulfur by weight. Bo claims that the composition was impossible to create under our present atmospheric conditions. It is a claim very hard to back up. Hammer advocates and Bo interpreted a supposed study by Texas Utilities in 1992, which found no irregularities in the hammerhead. They interpreted it as a sign of advanced metallurgy, 
On the other side of things, one may interpret the supposed data as being more evidence towards a modern hammer. Or lost technology. Even that is more likely than a pre-flood civilization. Another claim from Walter Lang was the Baytel lab technicians were sure that the rock could not have formed around the hammer unless there was a great deal of water and pressure and that the colified part of the handle was caused by water pressure and volcanic action. But here lies the problem. Where are the results from Baytel Labs? We can only assume if they don't have the results. It means there were no studies to begin with or the research was poorly documented and lost. Regardless, they have no current evidence to prove this claim. Limey concretions are thought to calmly form in calm conditions rather than extreme and the carbonized handle was barely carbonized. The carbonization process can normally occur without volcanic action, hinting that a recently dropped hammer could have been under the right conditions to turn out the same way as the London hammer. So in conclusion, the hammer to me does seem to suggest a recent time frame in which it was possibly left behind by an 18th or a 19th century miner and a material solution that hardened around the hammer. Based on the documentation on which the London hammer was found, it makes it hard to figure out if it was attached to the nearby rocks and fell off or came from a different location that was carried by the river. Creationist claims of the theory of a young earth or a pre-flood culture have nothing concrete to stand behind with their London hammer so far, as the majority of their so-called evidence seems to misinterpret the object. Who knows, maybe there is a small chance of the hammer being ancient. But the major problem with this whole situation is that extraordinary claims need to be backed up by extraordinary evidence. We just don't have that with the London hammer. As long as Bo keeps his hammer to himself, we won't be able to do new research that proves once and for all if the hammer is modern or of ancient origin. Thanks for watching. I really enjoy doing research on a supposedly out of place object. And if you guys like this type of video, I am willing to make a new series of videos proving or debunking out of place objects. If you haven't already, like and subscribe for more history content. It really helps me out. If you have any topics for me, make sure to leave them in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.